On November 26, 1930, an editorial of news with the headline Village of the Dead was published on the main page of the Meriden Daily Journal newspaper, which was published in Canada. A whole tribe in northern Canada vanished without a trace overnight, and this news caused a wave of panic to spread across the entire country of Canada. The lake in question is called Anjikuni Lake, and it may be found in a remote region of northern Canada. There was a small community known as Eskimo that resided on the shore. There were approximately 100 to 150 people who made a living fishing from this lake. This region in northern Canada is home to a small population of a few thousand people, despite the fact that it covers millions of square kilometers. This region is defined by severe weather conditions. There are a variety of animals in the surrounding area that are hunted in addition to the fish that are found in Angikuni Lake, and a large number of hunters come here to pursue these species. When a hunter by the name of Labelle arrived in this region to hunt on a chilly winter day in November 1930, he became so busy with his hunting that he was unable to recognize the time that night had arrived. His plan was to spend the night with the Eskimo people who lived on the shore of Lake Angikuni. He had the idea that he would travel there. As in the past, the members of this tribe were well known for being supportive of those who arrived from outside the community. As a result, Joe Labelle gathered his belongings and began heading in the direction of the Eskimo. In addition to the fact that it was a moonlit night, there was perfect silence in the distance. There was no one visible and there was no single voice that could be heard from afar. After what seemed like an eternity, Joe Labelle finally made his way inside the village. He was taken aback to discover that there were no people or animals present. Furthermore, he was surprised to see smoke rising from the tops of some of the homes, as if someone were within them. He walked to a camp at random, but there was no one there, and the situation was similar for all of the sites. In some homes, the cooking utensils were placed above the stove, but the food was burned in them. This meant that someone had kept the food for the night, but he was unable to finish it. Even the garments that the ladies of the community made were present, and the thread had been placed into the needle as well. At first glance, it appeared like the people who lived in the settlement had abruptly abandoned this location. Nonetheless, Joe Labelle eventually started searching the entire settlement. It was brought to his attention that the dogs that were being kept by the natives had a rope tied around their necks, yet the dogs were starving to death. Despite the fact that there was food ahead of the dogs, there was no one present to provide them with food. It appeared that someone was attempting to excavate a grave when he came across a hole in the ground at a certain site. When he saw this grave, it appeared that it would not require quite a bit of time to dig it. As a result of all that happened, which caused Labelle's worry and fear, he was extremely anxious about witnessing all of this happening by himself at night. However, it appeared like something unusual had taken place in this location despite the fact that people in this area definitely bring their dogs with them wherever they go. The fact that they were unable to even eat, that they forgot their clothes and their dogs, and that they even neglected to put out the fire that was burning was really abnormal. He could not stand to see all of this for quite a bit of time, and he arrived at the nearby telegraph office as fast as he could. 
After arriving at that location, he made contact with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Camps and informed them about the eyewitness story. As soon as the police arrived at the village, it became clear that what LaBelle had stated was accurate. The police had an intense belief that all of the individuals living in the community had been murdered by an unidentified attacker. On the other hand, there was no blood or any other indication of a conflict, which was according to their initial estimation. Without delay, the police initiated a search operation with the intention of locating the locals. A very unusual thing was discovered during this search operation. Perhaps no one had noticed that the entire community was covered with snow, but no one had left any footprints on the snow. There were just a single person's footprints, and that was LaBelle's own. LaBelle's footprint was the only one that was found on the snow. The lake had also been frozen, and the boats of the villagers were docked on the ground. This was due to the fact that the people do not fish in frozen lakes, so they put their boats on the ground. In the event that someone had attempted to kill and toss people into the lake, there would have been breaks of cracked ice on the lake. During the span of the investigation, the authorities found out that the people had vanished eight days before Joe LaBelle's arrival, and the dogs weren't killed from starvation within a day or two. This was demonstrated by the fact that smoke continued to emanate from the homes even after the fire had cooled. On the other hand, there was not a single answer to any of the questions that were brought before the police. After conducting search operations for quite a bit of time, the police finally decided to close this case permanently by naming it Unsolved. As time went on, the general public also forgot about it. In 1984, nearly 50 years after the occurrence of this event, Roger Bohr and Nigel Blundell wrote an article in which they attempted to prove a connection between the alien and the entire matter. According to what they wrote in their paper, when they went searching for this region close to Angikuni Lake, they discovered a hunter and his two sons hiding out there. They reported that they frequently witnessed a number of objects flying over the lake, each of which had an unusual form, and that these objects were proceeding in the direction of the same village where the Eskimo people resided. There was not a single piece of evidence that could be considered convincing that aliens appeared or that they attacked, which is why many did not believe that idea. The fact of the matter is that this event is going to be 100 years old, and to this day, no one has the solution to the question of where the people of the village of Angikuni Lake disappeared without a trace. After this, many individuals began inventing scattered stories about the disappearance of the Eskimo tribe. However, the fact remains that this incident is going to be 100 years old. There is still plenty of mystery about the disappearance of the Eskimo tribe that lived close to Angikuni Lake. I really hope that you will enjoy seeing this video and that you will also share it with others. We are grateful to you for your helpful comments. Watch out for us in the next video.